We turn now to what some military officials call an enduring and pressing emergency, the rise in veteran suicides. Tens of thousands of American veterans are homeless in this country. Post-traumatic stress syndrome affects many people, but it is more commonly found in men and women who have served on the front lines during combat. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I say your name. I you solemnly swear. To support and defend, support and defend. the Constitution of the United States, the United States. Against, all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and, domestic. And, to bear true faith, and bear true faith and allegiance to the same, then I, I will obey the orders of the, orders of the President of the United States, the United States. And, the orders of and the orders of those officers, those officers appointed over me. Appointed According to regulations, regulations. and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Code of military justice. So, help me God. so help me God. Adrian Hale, U.S. Marines, 2007 to 2012, Air Force Reserve, 2012 to 2015. I enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps because I lived through 9-11. And when I came of age, I felt like I had to do my part. I grew up in Rochester, New York, on the northeast side of the city, streets like Conkey Avenue, First Street, Avenue D. And I also grew up in a household that expressed the challenges that those communities face. Everything from domestic violence to substance abuse to the system coming in my household, government assistance, I mean, you name it. I seen it growing up. The most difficult part of the war for me was the tempo. I mean, I literally felt like I was being wrung out like a rag. I mean, it was nonstop every day. War doesn't stop because you're hungry. War doesn't stop because you're tired. War doesn't stop because you have to go to the bathroom. It's a constant grinding. And on my second deployment, I literally could not take it any longer. Part of being a Marine is being mission oriented to secure your country, to secure the world. You're a part of this monumental work and coming back home, you feel like nothing. You feel like anybody else. Just dealing with that feeling of nothingness, that emptiness, the lack of a mission, and the lack of meaningful work. I would drink every single day. That was the way I chose to self-medicate. I would go out every day. I was just constantly trying to distract myself and numb that pain that I felt from being separated from you know, brothers I have fought with and served with every day for five years. No longer feeling like I was a part of a larger than life mission. When you wake up every day with the pain of not having a sense of mission to orient you, not feeling valued like a contributing member of a team, you just want that pain to go away. At my lowest point, I had even considered suicide. You know, I had we kind of orchestrated in my head that I was going to get drunk as usual. Um, I was going to come home from a bar or a club, drive into my garage, continue to drink with the car running, and obviously just pass out and not wake up. So my mom recognized that I was spiraling out of control. She recommended that I go to the Veteran Outreach Center and just see what was there. And I was pleasantly surprised with the ways in which they were able to help me. They connected me to mental health treatment at the vet center. They helped me make claims to the Veterans Administration. They helped me connect to medical and even more importantly, the GI Bill. And for me, that would be important because I started to see a way out of this dark cloud that I kind of been under since I got home. And, and that would be an important benefit that would really change my life in ways I couldn't even imagine. As a student at MCC, I worked extremely hard as both a student leader and as a student. I maintained and graduated with a 4.0 and that allowed me to transfer to a college I would never have thought of, I would ever have the ability to go to. So I ended up graduating from Yale University with a bachelor's degree in political science. And at the invitation of Bob Duffy, I returned home to Rochester now to serve my purpose at the Greater Rochester Chamber of Commerce. Without the Veteran Outreach Center, I don't think I would have been able to access the benefits that were afforded to me as a combat veteran, nor would I have made the connections that I made that ended up having a meaningful, long-lasting impact on my life.